Hi everyone and welcome to this month's round of IronQuest. Today I'm joined by Johnny Walker. Hi Johnny. Hello. How are you? I'm very well thank you. How are you Sarah? I'm good thank you. I hope you're surviving okay with the uh, lockdown. All good up north so far. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this month we've obviously been visualising maps. Um, I've been really surprised by the number of entries we've received because I thought we might be impacted by everything that's been going on in the world. But clearly people have got more time to viz in some cases. Um, and we've had some really amazing entries. So I think we've got around 27 visits to go through today. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started. Jump back over to Google Sheets, not Twitter. <laughs> All right, but first up, we've got um, a viz by Amy Wu. Okay, I think I clicked the wrong one, hang on. Can you see my screen? Just to double check. I can, Sarah. Good. Okay, so Amy's viz is called Rough Data and she's looking at uh, dogs that were rescued in Austin and where they were found. So we've got the map in the middle and then the lines pointing out to each of the individual dogs and she actually included the pictures as well, which I thought was really cute. It's terribly cute. <laughs> I think Amy here knows that I dislike both maps and I, I hate dogs as well. So and I had there, she fit the two things that you hate. I, I hate together on a visualization. <laughs> I would say, um, like first of all, it's the, the map's quite difficult to see because um, it's so dark. And then I think with the, the lines on top, it just it's, it's almost lost, I think, with all the extra detail that's on there. And obviously the, the dogs <laughs> are distracting for all the good reasons. Um, yeah, yeah what, what are your thoughts, Johnny? They're so adorably distracting them. I How love could people thing. like abandon these dogs? Like, that's I know. Really I, I, you know, I mean, I, I do love this visualization. I think what I'll just go and say the same thing that Sarah said with really with, with regards to the map. It, I'd like to see why those dogs are um, abandoned in those particular areas and whether there's any particular, I don't know, socioeconomic, demographic. Mm -hmm. Um, geographic reasons why those areas are where dogs might particularly be abandoned and so maybe widening that map or making the map more of the focus in the visualization and then um, keeping the dogs there I mean that, that is really sort of um, it's a personal well personal story it's not personal story, yeah well it brings it to life doesn't it that like humanizes it a bit because exactly we just it's said there was emotive. 20 dogs yeah exactly. you don't know you, you, with the fact you can actually see them helps you sympathise with, with them, I think, a little bit more. Terribly emotive, especially to me, um, uh, having those there. So I think, you know, do not, don't lose that, but maybe widen that map out and maybe we could reduce the, the, um, the lines and the labels to something a little more minimalist or perhaps, perhaps the, if you've got the images there, they could pop up in a tooltip or something along those lines. But then, I don't know, maybe, maybe having those pictures straight there in the viz, but I guess it's kind of that thing of focusing in on the map and seeing the city, you know, where in Austin, you know, is there, is there a particular reason why one particular area or a hot spot um that these dogs are sadly ab ab abandoned in um yeah i think that extra analysis would be interesting like maybe if she had the like the, the the regional like boundaries of the city like different boroughs or whatever you call them um and maybe just show a little bit of analysis to say that a lot of the dogs that are abandoned in this area um yeah. end up in the animal shelter animal yeah, yeah. What did it, just um what, what um just at the top there what time scale was it over so, so um she's so got a week or less yeah which is crazy mm -hmm. like it, it is you know and, and i guess that yeah that just saddens me the fact that it's a, a week or less and and what i was going to say is I, I don't know i think off the top of my head having looked at some of the austin open data whether there's a longer time period perhaps the time period could be widened and then you might get more of that sort of geographic analysis well they might enable a better sort of geographical analysis with regards to uh, hot spots in the city etc okay maybe perhaps getting all the images for all the dogs across the time period might be difficult and therefore you might lose some of that emotion um 
that's attached to those images. But um, yeah, ah, it makes me sad looking at this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's you've got I'll have them all. <laughs> you've got all types of dog breeds as well. You've got, you've got sausage dog there, like, um, and I think at the bottom, she's. I like how she's broken out this one because it looks like there's a as puppies, see from like, oh. the same litter. Even worse. Yeah, no, that's and that's great. I love that. It's almost like yeah, this sort of that that, that visual connection between the same litter that's been abandoned in one yeah. geographic place and having those images. So I think having the images is super important, actually, in terms of this little story and the visualization. But perhaps I don't know. Make the, make the map bigger, and then we can we can see where they are, and if it's possible to expand it over a bit more of a um, time frame, so mm. that we can get some more hot spots. I think that'd be brilliant. And yeah, wow, that this one it does it pulls my heartstrings. Yeah, it's really um, sad. Yeah. Okay, great, great job, Amy. Uh, next up, we have great title as well. Yeah, <laughs> we have Angeluca looking at uh, popular cycle routes in Edinburgh. I like the diversity of all these topics. Like, this one's completely different <laughs> to the to the last one. It's a beautiful uh, thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I know that in any iron quest or in uh, you know the, the, even iron vase the, or, yeah. iron vase there's always this just this incredible range of things that people create and come up with it's, it's amazing i love this one I, I, I was looking at this one earlier i like their little call to action about hiring a cycle <laughs> um there and you know that's the you know that's the, the the point about it how you know having those calls to action is really cool and sort of linking that up with the real world out that's out there um I, and I also just love the fact that it's, you know, it, it's a map with a load of routes and using that kind of function on there. I, can we zoom in on that, Sarah? Is um, that no, probably maybe No, not. we can't. It's fixed. No. We uh, can look so, at the I, routes, but we can't do anything else. I don't think. I, only re reason is I want, to, I want to be able to zoom in and, 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 yeah. probably, and, and see some of that information that's in, underneath the, 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 the red. I don't know whether there's a way of perhaps reducing the opacity as well, perhaps on the lines and then, or you wouldn't have to do that if perhaps there was the possibility of zooming in, but I really want to see what's in the city centre and what, of Edinburgh and explore it because to me, you know, the, the cycle routes are that's the that's the kind of thing you know where are people going to and from and is it specific hot spots in you know is it edinburgh castle is it um is it something else is it is it just tourist related is it something that's more leisure and resident based um yeah but yeah. brilliant. i mean yeah so we can see obviously the universities here um which is great because you can see the people coming out of there and going into the city and, and stuff. But I know obviously on the Tableau maps, you can include points of interest. So these might work quite well here. So if we, if we were able to zoom in and, and turn that on as a layer, it would point out anything like the castle, for instance, um, without you actually add, adding any annotation. Yeah, so that, that could work. Just reading well. it actually. Sorry, can you scroll up a little? Yeah. The popular cycle routes in Edinburgh, and then it says this map visualizes just eat cycles. Okay. I've never heard of just eat cycles. No, unless no. that's just eat deliveries. Yeah, that one's confused me now. Um, but uh, I'm assuming yeah. perhaps it's perhaps you can hire a, a just eat cycle. I don't. I know. think you can because if you look at the fun fact, so the University of Edinburgh offers a uni pass deal uh, for limited one hour cycle hires for for a year for students and staff, which would. Well, explain I, I never even knew that data existed. I think that's exactly. a, a brilliant way of. Um, wow! Yeah, great, oh. amazing. Go, grab a grab some grab some data that's. Um, available and, and you know and showing that sort of information off i mean exactly like that the fun fact you know the fact that um the university offers these um uh passes out to uh, students and staff you know obviously it, it's going to sort of kind of show those that, that kind of trend and having that insight there yeah i, I love the fact that, that that i can't believe that there yeah just eat cycles open source data i'm gonna have to have a look at, look at that for the rest of the I, country i wonder if they've got yeah i was gonna say i wonder if they've got any other cities that they cover so i'm certain yeah. they don't do that uh down south not, not, at least not in london 
No. I wonder if it's sort of like, um, almost like the Boris bike, HSBC bike type thing. Yeah, but it's... Santander. <laughs> Santander. Yeah. So perhaps, it is, perhaps it's a very similar scheme. It's something that perhaps it is. It must be. Must be. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sponsored by Just Eat. But um, yeah, brilliant. I, I, but I, I want. Yeah, I want to zoom in. I want to see mm. you know, where people are really going to. Where are those students going to? And the university um, staff. You know, are they? Uh, where are they cycling to and from and going? So yeah. But yeah, I loved that. I loved the fact that it, there was this 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 data set that I'd never heard of it, but. Um, yeah. yeah another good thing about this one is that they, the map blends into the background so the the background color of the viz is the you know the background color yep yep um yeah the way yeah sort of match the um sea color the ocean color there mm -hmm. to, to, to match the viz background yeah, yeah great and obviously the the type the way the title sort of the color the same as the roots is um and the text is, yeah, yeah it's nice yeah all right great job uh next we have anjushri and this is the Toronto Fire Watch. This was actually her first Tableau Public Viz, which is just incredible. Yeah, I, I hate people. I mean, my, my first Tableau Public Viz is, well, the second actually is shocking, and it's actually published in the in the Make of a Monday book. So if you want to have a good laugh, go and have a look at that. <laughs> it's like, it's immortalised forever in 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 Make of Monday. It's like the it's like page oh. like sixteen as well. It's like <laughs> the first ones you get to. Um, and yeah. I actually saw this one come up on twitter when it was um and i saw everybody sort of saying your first face how is this possible kind of, yeah um I, you know again i i think the great thing around this is the color and the use of the sort of glowy symbols mm. um which is just that visual metaphor i think it was ben uh ben jones who always used to go on about um visual metaphors in data visualization and how powerful they can be you know straight away you know that this thing's about um fire and glow and um yeah great use of it it's it's like that firefly technique that uh, john nelson um from esri uh, used you know i mean it's and yeah. the other great thing in there as well is it's actually been it sort of like if we scroll back scroll back up back up Oops, yeah, the map so isn't got, fixed. Hang on. Oh, when it, yeah, fix the map. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just um, that's. Uh, that, I mean, it, yeah, the it, title it, and the the fire at the top just, just yeah sets it and, really well, I think. And then you've um, got the um, well, you've got the animation there, and um, you've got animation. You've got I, what I actually really like about this is is the fact that um, in that sort of top map or the, the, the yeah the top map is this one. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no map base. There's no streets. There's no nothing. It's no, just there's the, not. It's just the it's... city boundary. I think I'm assuming. But what I like about that is is it, it, the minimal aspect of it and really shows off where those fires are. However, if you scroll further down, um, then there are these other contextual maps that are put in there with regard. And then there's, you know other things. How far away is it from a fire station? And you know, or, yeah. or it, it, it's the, there's other things there that they're just using maps in different ways in the same visualization which is cool i love this and so this is like the buffer isn't it um yeah and, well, 20.1 20, 20. and it, it just she's applied it so well um again you know using all these different sort of tableau techniques there's the buffer there there's probably i don't know whether that's um um make That'll line, be make, that'll maybe be make, make point and make line make i imagine point and make line yep. so you've got buffers make point make line and then you've got some other sort of and then and again the sort of design aspect of the, the visual metaphor of the glowing fires which she mm -hmm. has brought through uh, into every other one of the maps yeah and you've got great annotations here which help tell the story as well yeah 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 um yeah great and and yeah annoyingly good for a first visualization <laughs> honestly imagine what a second one's going to be like you know wow well, well. <laughs> But, well, th that's the beauty of the, the way that things are going to be and the way that the community works, isn't it? I can't wait to see the next one. Yeah, great job. Okay, uh, next we have Artie. And this one is looking at her journey. Um, so where she's visited. So she looked at different countries around the world where she's visited. Um, she was born in Algeria, visited Europe and got married in India and then traveled to the United States. 
and then she t tells that story down here as well yeah again i think the wonderful thing about this is this personal story i, I love visualizations that where people collect the data themselves and and then tell a personal story it's just so re refreshing you know i mean i, I mm. do it all the time you just hit an open data site that probably loads of other people who have done before but telling a personal story is really really interesting and nice and i think i think again perhaps in this in the case of this visualization um i'd like to really again focus on the map maybe make the map a little bit bigger um and then yeah. kind of focus again on on the story points within that but um you know yeah i mean it's just yeah i love it you know i've i've not been to that many places in my life i've not spent that many years in different places and you know finding out where and why and to me is just a wonderful little story but yeah i'd like to see that that map a little bit bigger and and, and just trying to see exactly where um yeah, yeah. I don't, not not in exactly where. I don't obviously show your particular <laughs> home street address, but it's just yeah. I mean the the the, the countries etc. Um, I guess you oh you can you can zoom in so that's useful. You can zoom in um, yeah. I mean the fact that there's a big white space in the tooltip maybe thought th th that maybe a vision tooltip is going to pop up, but I don't think it will. I thought maybe she included a picture or something. Um. But no, I love it. It's 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 really interesting. Um, so you can click on the flag. So we click on the flag. I'm assuming that. Oops. Okay, it takes us to another map of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just question this chart here. I'd, I'm not sure why we're using um, like a, a like a diverging bar chart. Yeah. I don't think there's don't no think, need. There? No, it's not. I mean, we're only looking at one thing. So we're looking at the city and the number of years that were spent there. Yeah, because the number of Four years months. could just be on the axis, couldn't it? And, yeah. And the city, yeah. So, I mean, that would kind of, that, but that's a, that's a good point, actually. That might enable sort of like save a little bit of space and make that map a bit bigger and see that journey, but have a smaller bar chart somewhere else in the visualization i like the fact that there's the flags there though as well and i don't know perhaps the flags could point through to um the map via an action and, yeah because when i clicked on that obviously it took me to google maps i was yeah. expecting it to highlight on the map the, the yeah. that place um yeah but the one thing that shouldn't be lost in this is the is the little story about exactly yeah where you've been and why over the years um because i think that's wonderful it's wonderful yeah. to read yeah. I, if i did mine it'd be terribly terribly boring <laughs> so I, I could never do a visualization like this. you've been it'd to be, america a few times tableau conferences yeah oh, but yeah but that's not that's not living well it's, it's wonderful obviously it's my favorite time of the year uh, yeah um we have i know I, I haven't traveled um anywhere further east than cyprus i think so it might be pretty limited yeah but I, okay, yeah it might be so boring um however i think in this particular case you really do have a journey to tell and you know you've been you know all over the world so um yeah emphasizing that journey in the map perhaps yeah yeah Brilliant. okay next up we have brian and this one, we've got a lot of um, people talking on Twitter. Oh, it's my so, Brian shipwreck map. Oh, yeah. Shipwreck map. yeah. So he was looking at uh, the shipwrecks in the United States. They did this really cool technique. So you can um, click on a, an area, let's sort of click here. And then the, this like secondary map would zoom in on that area. Yeah. It, I think what, what they refer to it. Did they refer to it as a grid technique? Something I don't know whether Ken or Kevin had. I think it was Ken that was it yeah, Ken? that helped him out. Yeah, out to do that. That yeah, that's really cool. It's a very 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 cool technique. I actually really I I liked this map to begin with. You know, I, <laughs> I've always liked dark backgrounds, but um, um, I think the way that what Brian's done here is he's obviously used 
a, a, a very dark background with sort of the sort of almost black and white um, satellite imagery, which is mm. a wonderful map based background to set off the uh, brightness of the shipwrecks. Um, and then, yeah, that grid technique is very, very cool. Um, yeah. The other, I mean, the only one, the only one thing I really was going to say about this with the grid, because the grid technique is so cool. I was wondering about that space on the right hand side where South America is and whether yeah, you could yeah. use, yeah, it was almost like whether it would be possible somehow to, because there's no shipwrecks there. I guess you, you well, could there, either, there are, but he hasn't got the data for them. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of the, yeah, the, the, the stuff that is the, sh the wrecks that are being shown on the map seems to be only sort of North America. Um, I, yeah, I'm just wondering whether to use that space. I see what, why he's done that, and it fits in very well, actually, within the design and the way that the, 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 that sort of, like, zoomed-in box has appeared. But I'm just wondering whether you could use that space somehow. There's, I mean... Yeah, because it could... there's a lot, quite a lot of space here that is almost lost. Redundant, but then, redundant. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. looks great, but it's not adding any further information. Yeah, it's just whether I don't. I mean, maybe the maybe the main the, the zoomed in grid box here um, could be could be just dragged straight across, and then you have that bigger area. Um, yeah. um, but again, um, yeah, never Look, worry I about do... the dark backgrounds. I like them, and I think it, whose was the best one of the best we've seen this year? Tim 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 Meko Miko works for the Washington Post. Just did yeah. a one of the best visualizations this year i think andy kirk had done it and others had said amazing yeah. stuff on, it, on weather what was it what was it looking at i'm assuming it was a map right <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, was, it was weather i think it was weather patterns in the us and it was incredible in terms of all sorts of things to do with rainfall and um tornadoes and all sorts of things the temperature etc and it was a very dark background but it was ah, it was it was stunning beautiful yeah. so never be scared of them but no yeah, i know that um it, it depends on your taste obviously but um I, I like them and i think they can serve a great purpose for certain kinds of yeah. visualizing. Fifth, i mean this one reminded me of some of the earlier work of adam crayon so I know yeah. he did the like Sharknado viz and other yeah. vizes with this kind of style and I think it was the colour because the, the data duo used to use this colour quite a lot. Um, yeah. That's why I instantly thought when I first saw it. But I've, I mean, I've always had this that weird fascination with shipwrecks. Uh, I've got a fear of the sea. If, if you don't know, I've got a fear. Um, I think it's this weird, like freaky thing. I'm quite curious about shipwrecks and things like that. Oh, you um, do. You know, I, I know you are because you are... You have a fascination with the Titanic, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be when I was younger. I was obsessed with the Titanic, and my yeah. my dad all, used to buy books on the Titanic and stuff. So I thought this instantly that like, the topic drew me in. But what I yeah. thought was like super interesting was the fact that some of the shipwrecks are actually in like, the lakes. Yes, the Great Lakes. Yeah, yeah. or the rivers. Yeah. It's not just on like the coastline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this title is like fantastic. The way he's done that, like you, you can see the shipwreck in the in the background. It's great. Yeah, loved it. Oh yeah, I love seeing that. And again, like you say, you know, a really cool technique with the grid. Um, super yeah. useful for how many you know anybody mapping anything at a you know a, you know a national scale or international scale using that technique to zoom in on an area is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay, next we have Gary. That uh, Gary actually did two visits this month. Um, I know he did too. So two completely different ones. So this <laughs> this is his second. So this one looks at the Grand Canyon and the history of the Grand Canyon. So he's actually got like a, a timeline going down. So I spent ages looking at this. I thought it was fascinating, um, looking at all the dates when things happened and when the visitor center opened, which is surprisingly recently. Um, you know. Um, yeah. And then it just goes right down to the bottom and looks at visitor numbers over time, like when, when people, like what time of the year people most visit, that kind of it, thing. I, again, it's just, a, it's just a fascinating, I mean, obviously it's a fascinating place, but <laughs> it's those little details like, was it Robbie Knievel's jump in the map? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, those, those incredible this sort one, of, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it still amazes me that I, I love just little details like that you know and bringing out 
that kind of story in there. But uh, again, like you're saying, you know, when is the the uh, visitor centre open? You know, when, when? Really? You know, only then? You know? And yeah. I think, I think having the timeline actually to the left is really, really useful just to see that. You know, there's so, you know, maps and maps, they're great. You don't always need to map everything. Um, uh, and specifically in this case, the timeline certainly aids that. You know, you, it's difficult probably to do something like that on a map. I guess you could if you if you tried hard, but it would be probably pointless. But again, having have, having the map there specifically for certain things. You know, I'm personally I'm really interested in Robbie Knievel's motorcycle jump. I, I, I and he grew just up in... mi- he just missed right. He he didn't. I, I read no. this somewhere. Did he just miss? Yeah. yeah here we go. Um, he broke his leg, yeah, crashed on landing. So, so I grew up in... <laughs> well, that was I 99, grew... so it wasn't that long ago. Really. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I was more of the evil Knievel, um, which is uh, an evil <laughs> Knievel uh, era. And so to me, you know, he was a hero of mine. So seeing those little details, yeah, really made, made me nostalgic, this visualisation. It was very good. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, and then again, you know, and having visitor numbers on there, the temperature mm-hmm. um, and understanding that, yeah, yeah, just that other sort of information on there is great. You know, yeah. I mean, map, like I said, maps and maps, but having a lot of other contextual information associated with that map is really, really great and probably needed most of the time. I don't know how many maps are spot on in terms of storytelling. Yeah, I think, I mean, this map's a little bit different because it's so zoomed in on the canyon, right? It's not like the other ones we're looking at. They've got coastlines and things. Um, I do like how he's pointed some things out because without that, I I mean, I wouldn't have a clue, you know? I think that's super interesting. I do like the way he's done the um, the visitor numbers and and the way that he's done the the temperatures as well. It's mm. really, it looks really good. Yeah. Great. Have you have you been there? Uh, no. Frank? No. No. Oh, virtually. Yeah. No, I haven't either. I keep meaning to go when we go to Vegas and just yeah, around to no. it yet. Yeah. Um, and also, um, if I, this this uh, top piece as well, I think looks really yeah. great yeah um, well, again it's like a, that visual sort of metaphor bringing that in and using it almost as part of the, the sort of title band should we say but it's actually data driven um a data driven heading header yeah, yeah. and i mean yeah. the visitor numbers over time are insane you know they <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. getting bigger it's down to robbie Knievel. <laughs> yeah Next up is Gary again, and this one actually got visit of the day. So he was looking at fly tipping in London, which mm. I thought this was fascinating. Um, and so originally he had, I think, all the um, the hexes were the same colour, and then I suggested to him that maybe colour them by the number, the overall number of fly tipping incidents, so we can yeah. see at a glance like which uh, boroughs stand out. Yep. Um. And then, then the result of that, he got visit of the day, which is great. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's just fascinating. And I'd love to know more because, I, I mean, what happened in Enfield for, <laughs> for people to suddenly, like, start fly tipping so much and then, then it dropped off. And, it dropped off. Yeah. I, do you know what I love about this? And it, it, it's a sort of more of a, a general comment. And I don't know whether we're going to be reviewing Rob Radburn's. We're not. Um, no, he didn't. No. no. It's no... Uh, it, it's more of a general thing about maps don't have to have map bases or map backgrounds. Mm-hmm. It yeah. doesn't, ma- doesn't matter. It's, I, I, you know, there's, there's plenty of visualizations you see that are just don't have any map bases. You know, I'm that's probably, I'm contradicting myself. All I ever do is map based, <laughs> but it's not the point. I, you know, a map is a map is a map, uh, be it like Rob Radburn's tree map that he did, which is just, I, I love every tree map he does. I just yeah. I love Rob's work because he does, it's his, it's his analysis and style. I think what he creates is just sort of visually wonderful and there's great analytics in there. And I think this is exactly the same thing. You know, the fact that the River Thames is the white space uh, mm-hmm. as well. You know, a map doesn't have to be, something you done in map box or map background etc you know um you know and actually possibly even in this case you know the, the the map that's at the top in the top right i'm 
Yeah. I wonder whether that's a, a, a is it a, I'm wondering if it's a national map of fly tipping cases, if it's shaded that way. I don't know, actually. Yeah, I'm curious now because I didn't really pick up on that before. Yeah, or where, you know, okay, a location map of where is London useful, but yeah. perhaps make that more, un 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 unless the information data is in there, that'd be interesting. To There's see no tool it, tip, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe, may maybe, maybe London and the uh, northwest are particularly bad for fly tipping. Yeah, well, he said 34% of the incidents across the UK were in England. We're, we're in London, sorry. Oh, um, Maybe that's where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, so maybe it, the north yeah. west well, is that's pretty, pretty bad. That's kind of cool then. Perhaps, perhaps, something, perhaps the tooltips there or something would be cool just to, to, to additionally highlight that factor, that fact. But um, it's almost like using a location map, but using a data-driven location map, which is a really cool feature as well. Yeah. On top of the, the London borough hex, hexi map thing, which is, again, cool. Just the trends in them, you know, easy to yeah. see like you said the shading the extra shading was just genius mm -hmm. and then the little almost like you know little spark lines of the of the trend and the, the name and the number just done brilliantly yeah it's like super simple but it's so effective and i like what you said before about the you know using the hex map instead of a a regular map because some of the, yeah. obviously these boroughs are all different sizes and it might be if we if we did use a, a regular map that the bigger yeah. ones would stand out more yet they might not be the ones that are fly tipping the most exactly exactly and and i guess that's again you know it <laughs> i think it's andy creeble doesn't he? he always says um <laughs> do you actually need to map it a kind of thing well, yeah guess there is that but also yeah taking into consideration yeah geog actual geography the size of areas you know is a is a coropleth map it's the whole it's it's the whole u.s election issue <laughs> and you can't, old montana <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you can't map something on 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 or, or the uk you know election issue you know these yeah. things, the huge uh, geographical spaces that have very little population and this big blue conservative north yorkshire where i live is very visually distracting and probably incorrect so um if you look at it from that point of view so yeah brilliant technique and a, a great i love this one yeah um but i want to know yeah what's going on in enfield yeah tell us and what's and, and, and what changed because you know yeah. it's fascinating to me anyway um okay next we've got geography And she's looking at sinkholes in Florida. Yeah, I like this one. There's the, the, it's the, the, the sort of dual access mapping between um, the kind of base rock. The sort of, so there's the bare or thinly covered limestone. So she's used, been sort of using that coropleth and then yep. putting the reported sinkhole incidents on with that those um, uh, dots. Um, yeah, I, I, I like this one. I'm, I, I want to know more. Mm. Again, can, can we zoom in on? We can, we can yeah. So if we zoom in. I wonder whether fixing that map, that might, what might be useful is almost having the map window a fixed size somewhere. Or a, yeah, because yeah. I could, I mean, I could zoom out, I expect. Yeah, I can zoom out further than, oh no. Yeah, I can, I can zoom out, but she hasn't included anything else. But yeah, I agree. If it was fixed, it's good that you can zoom in because we've got this clustering going on. Yeah, um, yeah. Why? I, I, I'm just fascinated. I think it's to do with the, the what the ground is made up of. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, a fun fact for you, my, my second uncle and his wife, they, they had a garden. They lived in, in Kent. Um, and one day they woke up and this massive sinkhole had appeared at the back of their garden. And um, their next door neighbours, they had like a terrace house, their next door neighbours, it for two doors down actually had to move out and the houses were demolished because really? it just wasn't safe to live there because they thought that the ground was going to swallow up the houses love to excuse me you might be able to hear my cat cassie she's um <laughs> she's been so she's just meowing to get out of the room for her tea but I'll, I've, I've just opened the door cassie <laughs> Good girl. no you had a cat as well oh yeah she's an old she's how old is she now 15 bless her she's oh. a old girl but she's obviously hungry um yeah sorry. so it's a crazy crazy story yeah so they and then so like 
my uncle, what should we call him, he ended up acquiring all that land where the houses were because they couldn't build on it. And that basically the, the council said, well, you might as well have it. See, have I, still think, I still think there's something more to these clusters. There, they seem to be, I, I guess this is kind of the point, the sort of, I, I, I'm assuming those clusters, and this is the problem, perhaps I'm assuming the clusters are, are in urban areas which is therefore that's why they're reported but i can't tell yeah. whether they're urban areas are they it'd be, it'd be good to zoom in perhaps have some of the map base so you could perhaps make some of that um color a little more um opaque transparent yeah so not necessarily just whether it's to do with the the rock but that, yeah let's let's i, I want to zoom in or explore more it's only because the maps intrigued me i want to um i want to know Mm. you raise a good point as well you know about people reporting them if they're going to be if they're in rural areas and no one can see them then i'm assuming they wouldn't appear on this data yeah i guess there's the thing about uh it's almost like um open data or in new york city on rats it's where people have reported them it's not yeah. necessarily that there's rats there or not um so perhaps there perhaps there's the possibility there in the map looking at it, it might be a sort of a almost a proxy for proxy measure for population and urban density. But so whether there's anything to explore more in that data, there must be something more than um, I mean, I appreciate it's something to do with the type of uh, limestone or uh, um, thickness of ground, etc. But it'd be yeah. great to explore that more. Yeah. And for each, um, I guess he's a, I don't know what you call them regions um but she's put a description in around that the type of the ground and the type of sinkholes that they tend to get there so these yeah. these do differ slightly I think it's just intrigued me because I think it's <laughs> it's one of those things you always see on the news that you see this new sinkhole reported somewhere you know this crazy massive hole that's appeared and yeah. at the I don't know, to me, they're just an incredible sort of natural or natural or not necessarily natural phenomenon <laughs> that yeah, uh, yeah. happens for one reason or another. And um, it'd be great to dig into that a bit more, just explore it more. It just mm -hmm. totally, it's totally tweaked my, you know, I, I just want to see what, what's going on. Where, yeah. Why? One thing I would say is that this fizz is really tiny. So um, I'd, if it was me, I'd make it a little bit bigger and maximise that space. Yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know how big it probably is. No, um, it just looks on my screen. Yeah. It looks really small. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, widen the dash, widen and lengthen the dashboard size. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up, we have Jordan. So this is looking at COVID nineteen. So, I don't know if you want to add anything on. <laughs> mapping COVID-19 and it's a hot topic at the moment oh yeah <laughs> so this it's, is this is it scares this, me COVID yeah I mean so I think the one thing we need to bear in mind about anything to do with this topic is not to invoke fear um I think some of the dashboards that some people have produced could be misinterpreted and make people anxious I think it's. I'm not I saying this one does, but I think in just no. in general, it's a topic we need to approach with yeah, some no. caution. I, it, I think with the ongoing crisis across the world at the moment, it's certainly um, the visualization of coronavirus has become, yeah, like you say, a very, very hot topic in terms <laughs> of the right way and the correct ways to do things. Should it be log scales? Should it be proportional symbol maps? Should it be choropleths? Um, I think that, you know, and, and, and do we leave it to the experts? Yes, we should always talk to the experts and leave it to the experts. And that's a wider discussion anyway. You know, there was a vis I did recently on, um, it was a migration of some birds, unsurprisingly. But the, again, I was talking to the, um, the doctor in charge of the research and she really pointed out things to me that I just would never have got in the data, nuances mm. and caveats. And, you know, and that's in bird migration. This isn't to do with, um, you know, um, people dying and becoming very, very poorly across the world. So I think, yeah, um, always a difficult one to, 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 to 
cover is this yeah. um i mean just but, just i mean i'm not an epidemiologist or anything neither are you but no. one thing that keeps coming up is around um testing and and if people could access testing so if you've got a lot of testing going on you're likely to have more confirmed cases before more because more people are being tested um and that's just one thing to bear in mind right uh, well quite data. yeah At cases the number of cases how realistic is the number of cases in the country where well, there's a lot of discussion about it um unfortunately the number of deaths are probably more reliable mm. um and i say probably we're, we're making an assumption there that all the reporting is happening but tragically that's probably the case um yeah um you know however you know the way that the visualization has been put out there there are some some bands at the top um yep. And some I mean, line charts, and I think the map actually, you know, does use the the proportional circles. It's not using that 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 choropleth. Yeah, technique. and the map hasn't got those awful red <laughs> dots that you see on some of them. It just looks like a big yeah. like death map, you know. Um, yep. This one's I like the colouring. Um, I think on this particular case, you could probably bring. We've got well, confirmed cases in blue and then the confirmed deaths are in orange. Perhaps yeah. you can bring that forward. I confirmed. think you could swap them over on the legend. They would bring come to the front because obviously we've got yeah. more de more confirmed cases than deaths. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think you can probably bring that forward in the... Yeah, bring, it, bring that forward so you can see those numbers. Um, yeah, I, again, it's such a difficult time for everybody. <laughs> uh, and such a, a difficult thing to ethically and correctly visualize. Um, that's not suggesting that any other topic matter cannot be <laughs> careful, carefully or ethically visualized. I think the only advice I would give is listen to the experts, the epidemiologists, listen to the mapping experts, listen to the data experts, log scales, this, um, you know, John Byrne Murdoch's work and mm. You know, Andy Kirk had covered this a lot and Ken Field had covered, had, had done some brilliant blogs and there was some work done by the Data Visualization Society with regards to looking at these things and I think taking all those things into account and really sort of going, should I do this? Should I publish this? I know it's a hot topic, but should I do it? Do I know yeah. exactly? The um, the most recent chart chat, so the one that, that last week with Steve Rexler, um, and, oh, and Jeff, and Jeff Schaefer, Andy Cockgreave, and Amanda. That was fantastic. So I learned a lot on that. And they went through all of these like little nuances and things to think about when we're looking at this data. Um, it's recorded, so I recommend like watching that. It's really good. And also the video that John Burns Murdoch put out that justified how why he was applying certain techniques was really interesting as well. Yeah. I, again keep an eye on those experts there the, the experts in data visualization in the field for, for visualizing this kind of data yeah yeah uh, what is interesting on this one is he does include some more information so the origin of the virus um and just just talking around the, the topic a little bit more and also the uh, widespread financial implications so yeah. this i mean this is this is great um so this is obviously a slightly different stance and more like the impact of COVID-19 rather than COVID-19 itself, which is something I'm quite interested in, like looking at changes in behaviour and things like that since this has happened. Um, it's, I, it, it's, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I know it's a hot topic, but just seeing the way that um, data is being used out there, obviously the impact on the financial markets, the impact on flight flights and uh, having seen some data visualizations on the reduction in the number of flights craig taylor's been doing some amazing stuff at work on that there's been some incredible work with using mobile networks and seeing mm -hmm. where people were during spring break in florida and then where they've moved to in the rest of the united states you, you know and and it, it, all this this data is incredible i mean other you know strange things streaming habits you know whilst yeah. people are working at home and Never mind things like online. I think Alberto had uh, tweeted something about, you know, the, the, the rise in um, streaming of pornography during the daytime. <laughs> you know, these things are, but, you know, there's, there's, there's incredible data and, and the way that organizations are finding this data to, to 
understand the story and the impact across the world you know the yeah. incredible um data that was on you know almost like shopping you know retail in the uk you know there was more people more money and more people went to the supermarket in march in the uk than ever before that you yeah. know the it was to do with panic buying this is an absolute direct influence of um uh, uh, of the covid-19 situation so it's fascinating yeah i saw a one a chart the other day on twitter that was looking at um web searches for or, or people looking to buy certain things that have just shot up things like dumbbells or external monitors um yeah, yeah. and just things that you yes. you wouldn't have even thought about before yeah but obviously with this the the, the demand for these things has, has gone crazy yeah. Um, and another one that was really interesting is the open table data. So looking at restaurant bookings and how they've just just dropped off. I mean, hundred percent reduction year on year because the restaurants aren't open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, there's going to be some a lot more incredible, sadly incredible data stories that are going to come out from this. You know, and the way that the world and population is reacting to it and habits etc it's um yeah interesting sad times mm -hmm. okay next up we have kate she looked at the ages of buildings in manhattan oh well, yeah we can be quick on this one yeah i think she got visit the day um she yeah did. she did yeah got a little tracker <laughs> yeah i love this yeah um, i love the colors on this i don't really know what more to say um <laughs> apart from sorry so we shouldn't skip across it because it's because it because it's brilliant um i yeah i love the colors i love the frame i know a lot of people have mentioned about that use of that that light gray frame I yeah that was great. i've done that on the last few of my visits it just makes such a difference yeah it's, yeah it's an odd isn't it it's an odd thing that this 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 little visual technique it's it's brilliant but um again the um uh the colours, the layout, um, yeah, I, I, I loved it. Um, I, I don't know what more to say. No. Uh, it's, um, I think it's really, really beautiful and great. And there's those nice little annotations that show, you know, um, the Empire State Building and the, the World Trade Centre and yeah. um, the Stock Exchange and picking out some of those um, uh, key buildings yeah um, do you know what i really love about it is this um bar chart where she's almost like got its overlaps they actually look like a skyline yeah, the buildings yeah yeah yeah. The, yeah skyline yeah uh, I, yeah it, um yeah much to learn from this it's i think it's great um i don't know whether was there something on there i don't know whether um she changed it but there was something i think originally maybe she had some animation on there or she's something. got animation so if i click on a year or year band she the this chart at the top oh, breaks out yeah, yeah yeah okay that yeah. that's working quite nicely on public there's a lot of points in that data isn't there oh gosh yeah yeah how many, i've, I've know, looked at this data before like the building footprints um and i, I nearly broke my laptop i think <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's soon. I, I, hats off to Tableau Public. I doff my flat Yorkshire flat cap because it's working very well. <laughs> yeah, um, well but uh, yeah, uh, again, just to stress the, the the simplicity of it and the layout. Again, not a, no map base. You know, no. if I'd have done this, I'd have stuck some some stupid map base on there. But there's no need. No, um, you really don't you know, need it with with the buildings. It's, it, you can so, you, you can you can see Central Park because there's nothing there in the way of buildings, right? Such detail. Yeah in the actual data and the, and, and, and the shape files and the, the shape of the buildings etc it's um it's fantastic i have i, I nothing more to say <laughs> which yeah apologize if you can hear my daughter in the background she's playing she's not crying she's doing some role play with her toys <laughs> no. No. um so this one is by kelvin and he looked oh, at late this, entry. Yeah, he entered this morning. So it was um, penguins in Antarctica. Which I, I think yeah, is I love fascinating. This. I thought you'd like this. This is like right up your street. Well, again, dogs, animals, and maps. I hate them. Um, <laughs> I, I was really chuffed to see that Kelvin would obviously invested a lot of time in learning this this the, the, the projection, the polar projection. Because yeah, I think. Particularly in this case, 
for this particular data set I've, I've seen it done a few times kind of like this but i think he's done such a fantastic job of using that projection um i and obviously i love animals and birds particularly but um so yeah it was it was great to see that again he's mirrored the the ocean color to the mm -hmm. rest of the visualization which is great um I'm, the only the one the only one comment i actually had about this visualization was the little bit at the bottom there there's the where it says most studied site and the little line chart i just wondered whether yeah. you could use some transparency there um yeah one thing I'd, I'd love to see so he's got this color legend down here what would be great if he just added a circle around these penguins like a border on just to, with the color I, 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 and then that yeah, would, you that wouldn't need that legend at all because i'm looking here and then i'm looking down here kind of cross-referencing yeah. with, with the map as well that would reduce that cognitive load of yeah so okay a chin stop chin strap penguin is that pink color and because you'd have that pink that'd be that's a great idea add that little board around there yeah. um i do love these little pictures of penguins by the way yeah they, they are great they're really oh, they're wonderful yeah yeah it's just brilliant um I, yeah i yeah really really liked it and it was just sort of the uh, again the effort and the learning that's gone behind it to try that new projection i know was it adam green did one on I think he did one recently on ooh, it was arctic explorers and he'd, he'd okay yeah again, he'd, he'd done a similar um projection with the help of ad mccree i think or, yeah yeah sarah uh, actually yeah sarah battersby how to do this sarah battersby and ad McCree. Uh, McCree. um follow them on twitter and learn this these these projections because I, we haven't talked about projections yet, and I know projections are a hot topic in the mapping world, <laughs> and possibly very strongly so in terms of um, uh, Mercator or not. Um, but I think in this particular case, there, there's ways around it, and sometimes the projection normal standard Mercator works well at small scales, but perhaps sometimes we should talk about projections um on a wider scale for certain other things we'll have a look if there's other global uh maps perhaps a different projection would be yeah. worth trying out but it's sure there'll be one yeah all right and uh, next we have lisa and she's looking at housing in new york so for this one she um i think this got uh and it's got visit the day yeah um just want to double check so she's looking uh, she's made it actually look like a blueprint. So it's a blueprint for expanding affordable housing opportunities for low to middle income New Yorkers. Um, so you can see on here, I, I actually gave us some feedback originally because I think initially that all the circles look the same. And so wouldn't it be good to show um, finished and under construction in a slightly different colour so you get a sense of where the construction's happening and... Um, oh, hang on. Um, and yeah, so she's changed that, so that's quite interesting. So I imagine we can filter for one or the other. I hope. Maybe not. Wait, that, that, maybe that's something to change, but. You filter it via the um, donut chart. I don't know whether. No, I don't think so. That'd be, that'd be cool to do. Yeah. To have that on there. But I like that. Again, I can see some. Um, oh, cool. There's in tooltips. Mm. Well. Oh, wow. Okay. So it really breaks down the different units, income type, size. Brilliant. Just yeah. extra, extra insight in those tooltips. The other great thing that obviously, I, I like you said at the beginning, you know, she's, it's the blueprint. That's the whole point of the design in this. Yeah. Picture isn't it and then i'm making a huge assumption which i'm pretty sure i'm pretty certain she's got into map box and you know tweak the map box style to fit within the wider visualization design which is exactly what the beauty of and that partnership between map box and tableau is you know mm -hmm. it's brilliant well if it was me i'd actually take the border off the map just and let's let it blend in a little bit more because you've got the, the same color anyway so i think yeah yeah. That would that wouldn't restrict it so much. Um, yeah. I think we've got these as buttons at the top, so we can, yeah, we can zoom in on particular yeah. areas, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Yeah, maybe take that border off. Yeah, it would because it would be there anyway. Um, yeah. So. 
Yeah, I, I, I think. I mean, it's a minor thing, but um, yeah, no, I, yeah. I like it. I do like, you know, how she's just included the roads, and again, you've got that's the only layer we've got, right? Just the yeah, the road yeah. layout. But I mean, just you can still get that sense of of where things are, and yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah, I, I, well, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty certain if you if you zoom in a bit more on that map, Sarah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, you know, the, I mean, the great thing is, is that you will be able to once you zoom in, you yeah, have that um, exact location, be able to yeah. identify that. But yeah, exactly that sort of that. Again, if you look at it now, the view that we're at now, you've got um, white borders. Mm -hmm. for blocks and for uh geographical areas and then the blue which is exactly what she's done in the rest of the visualization so bringing through that um styling yeah we've only really got two colors right for the whole viz white and blue yeah 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 great and blueprint brilliant <laughs> yeah yeah great job all right next we have louise louise hasn't posted for ages so i'm really happy to see her do this one Oh, she's done the schools in, in, in Ireland, hasn't she? Yeah. So post-primary schools in Ireland. By type and fee-paying versus fee-paying gender. And again, she's the, the map blends into the background. Yeah. It's quite yeah. nice. And I mean, and the... the, the, the Satellite bait, satellite maps are really difficult to work with. I oh, find. Yeah. I've I, tried I and lot. failed many times. I, I, I mean, I, I use them a lot, but I mean, I guess Ireland's quite a different thing because it's generally nice and green. But you know, you can have in one country such different colours like greens and browns, um, and any any range of colours of green and any range of colours of browns, and then urban areas, etc. And so actually white is a really, really good color that tends to work generally with um, uh, symbols and, 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 and labeling on, on, on satellite maps. It tends to be pretty good unless you go to somewhere where there's a desert and then it's sort of yellow and then you're never going to be able to do that. But yeah. you, can, you can work around that with the styling if, well, if you use map box in this particular case. Um, you know, you can change, adapt that styling for different geographical regions. But I like the way that she's using the white because it's it just it just really punches on top of a, a satellite map basis. It's yeah, I, and I love the way she's used these colours to make it pop as well. So you've got in, in contrast to the white, you've got these these bright colours um, mm. to show like the the religious um, denomination of the schools. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that just really makes brings it to life. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, it's great. I, I, I love this stuff that people find. You know, what I also love is when people map things that are personal, either personal stories or from where they live and mm. uh, you know, and or where they work or where they. I love, I love that. I love to be able to see that and and, and recognize. I know that person comes from there, and they've done this map because they want to find out something about where they live. And I love that. Yeah. that she's, she's got some really nice animations as well click on areas in the map oh yeah love how these change yeah all right nice to see you back louise <laughs> um next yeah. up we have is mariana yes <laughs> <laughs> and this is looking at sunshine all around the year so the, the worldwide daily average sunshine duration so interestingly this this map has no background whatsoever Right, so we only yeah. have the, the symbols of places that where they've recorded the number, hours of sunshine. Yeah. I, when I first looked at this, I sat there and I thought, do I need a little more geographical context to align my brain? As in perhaps something like... Um, a country border or something along those lines but if you scroll scroll down Sarah. yeah um oh sorry no yeah there's there's, there's obviously the visualization at the bottom which is, is, is i love that by the way yeah the that's great yeah um let's go up to the top again yeah I'd hover over one of the points yeah let's go to and so we know that the sunny well we know that the sunniest sunniest cities in the south are yellow 
and then the sunniest cities in the north are orange. Yeah. Um, I can I can recognise where Africa is, and I can mm-hmm. recognise where South America is, and where North America is. But then I start to go. It's actually it's actually Europe and some of the other places. I sit there going, ah, do I still need a little bit more? Do I? Do I not? And I don't know actually whether I necessarily do. And I think that's why this has confused me, this one, because I actually really like it. Yeah. yeah. The reason I like it is, okay, I know that that rough area is Europe, say, and it, and it kind of invites me what to want to go in and explore and hover. I actually really like that. Instead of just being blatantly, obviously. Yeah. Possibly. I don't know whether there could, there could be sort of, um, there could be some slight boundary maybe just showing where. Yeah, I think because you've got so few in some of these countries, so like North America, you say you can just make about make it out. We can only make that out because of Africa and and South America. I think yeah. if we just looked at North America on its own, it, you know, it'd be quite difficult to yeah. Yeah. to see where that was. And what I'd really like to see is you've got the the sunniest cities, but there's no way of actually seeing these in the viz, unless you know where they are, of course. Um, so it'd be quite nice if we could select them all in one go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My geography's yep. not that good. <laughs> no, well, no, no, um, neither is mine, and that, that's I think that's that to me. Um, that's the thing. So I, yeah, I can probably name a few of those places, but um, oh no, I wouldn't have guessed that was St. Pierre. Anyway, um, I, yeah, part of me still thinks possibly just some really delicate map styling with regards to just giving a little bit more of a a geographical um, visual nudge, I'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just give me one second, bear with me. No problem. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? I can. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Next up, we have Mayank. That's how you say it. So this is looking at food deserts in the United States. This always reminds me of the viz that um, Corey did for he got into Iron Viz with. If you remember. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I really love this this like almost like infographic header. Yes, it's, I, I think I recall seeing the tweet, and he, I can't remember he said how much he was influenced by something on with regards to the header. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just I, really striking. Know, yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 the great thing about this is that I, I think it's that tone throughout um, mm. the color and the tone just. You know, the, I also love the map. Just the the, the dots. I, th- I think I really like that. I just, yeah. I just, um, um, it's great in terms of. Again, you know, there's no map base. It's um, not. No. It, it's actually a really nice projection as well. If you look at the map, that top of the the United States isn't straight. So we know that what's happened there is is that the projection's been done um, more correctly. We shall say. Um, uh, yeah, you know, where are the food deserts? The dark bits. Uh, you can see those straight away. Um, I like the legend as well. Um, yeah. I really like that. And yeah, um, yeah I, do, I have nothing negative to say about this. Do we have a, so what happens if we click one of these? Oh. Oh, a bit of the old, it's like Alex. Um, oh, I think he did say, actually, I think he'd worked on it with Alex. Right, so um, we've got proportional distributed, so... It's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a, that's a very Alex. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I think Alex had helped helped him out with doing that. But again, yeah, I like. I mean, 
that, that's a cool transition yeah. anyway. Not a transition. Oh, no, I really like this. It's fantastic. Um, okay. Yeah. Next yeah. Up. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't got any more feedback. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. Um, anything I would say maybe is add some tool tips. Um, yeah. I think that would be better, actually. You're right. Um, if, yeah, add some tool tips for though, that just that little bit more information. Where, where is that darker area? What, you know, I'd like to know which town or county or um, city it might be. Um, yeah. So you, yeah. All right, next we have Mira, and she looked at trees in New York City streets. Oh, this was sort of a grey green, yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah. It's taking a while to load for some reason. I think, yeah, there's quite a lot of this. I mean, I love, I love all the visits that Mira does. They're fantastic. Um, she does, this, she does this a really fun. nice style, doesn't she? Yeah, she, she does. She's and really she's really, and she's really nailed that style. I think you can, you can identify her visits almost instantly. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one, I think it's really lovely because it's only using a handful of colours, just different shades. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, she's got the, the call to action as well, which is nice. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I really, really, really like her designs. I think they're simple, very clean. The use of tone and colour that she always uses is fantastic. Um, some nice little tool tips, some nice little filters through to the different burrows. Mm -hmm. um, do you know, it was funny, actually. I... Um, I actually downloaded this visualization and I wanted to make those circles <laughs> smaller. Um, Which I wanted circles? To make them for the trees. Oh, okay, um, right. Yeah, I wanted to make them so that you could see each individual tree. But um, that That's is a bit nothing, ambitious. <laughs> well, it's nothing to do with um, it's nothing to do with uh, the, the, the mirror's visualization. It, it was um, it was something in Tableau. I don't think Tableau al allows you to make things that small. Um, oh, okay. but I, yeah, I really wanted to try try that. I was sat there thinking, oh, I want to reduce the circle sizes. That was just me being um, really pedantic. But again, that's nothing to do with Mira. I, yeah, I, again, nothing to nothing to say. Nothing. Only positive things to say. Call of call of, call to action. Brilliant. You know yeah. the design, the layout, the bands. A nice simple bar chart um great labeling great little call outs um and great tone and color and layout um and again not no map base no it doesn't need to be no. there's so many trees doesn't need to be you know you can see those areas again manhattan uh mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it doesn't you don't have to have a map base just because i use one don't listen to me <laughs> What's interesting about this one is, um, so you've got Queens as the borough with the most trees, um, mm. but then looking at the looking just at the glancing at the map, you think, oh, it's Staten Island, but then it's, I guess, all this the trees in, in Staten Island are more clustered together. Maybe there's parks or things there with with more trees, whereas in in Queens, I'm guessing they're more spread out. Yeah, that's one thing that yeah. struck me. Maybe then, I wonder if that if that struck you. Maybe there is something there with regards to the colour that's slightly throwing things. Maybe a legend, if there's a, a, um, a key or a legend to. Yeah. Uh, you know, just a really discreet legend or key in this bottom right hand corner to fill that space there, and um, that would explain uh, the, the colour choices. Yeah, because we look like we've got categorical colours, so it would be nice. Maybe if there was some kind of key, but I yeah. mean, it's a minor thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's great. I think yeah. she's got a slight border as well. Looks like she's got a little a white border around the edge. Oh, yeah. I never noticed that. Yeah. I never noticed that. He's bought this. It's the new thing. It's a new trend, these. yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to. Right, I won't do it if it's. <laughs> I'll create no borders. No, that's not popular. Veronoi map, maybe? <laughs> yeah. They're on trend. Next a negative border I wonder if that's possible anyway all right so next we have a viz by michelle um so michelle is looking at skiing or ski resorts in um new england sorry which resorts have the most lifts in new england so i know that michelle is an avid skier she lives in boston um so she's very lucky that she can access all these places pretty easily uh, yeah there's a few things i really loved about this which was um 
well, the, the, well, the different, as we're talking about maps, it was the way that um, the area of interest was in grey, mm. uh, different colour to the surrounding areas. Um, yeah, so it's New England, isn't it? The, uh, the grey area, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but what's great about that is, <clears throat> okay, potentially you could mask that area out and only show new england so you could <laughs> you could do it in map box um if you masked out that area and show that but i think what, how she's handled that actually is really really clever the, the area where it says let it snow the title and then that sort of first paragraph you know sitting in that area there is great so she's using the the negative space around the map in a wonderful way but the other thing, map i love about it is which i found was, was really great is the one in the bottom left hand corner where else can um, I ski? So where else can I ski in the States? And it, I, it was just the, um, it was almost this little symbol thing of nothing and peaks. And I, I don't know, I really, really liked it. I got this yeah. impression of these peaks are obviously where the hills are. And you know, available, yeah. But, um, I, it, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no hills in, um, well, I say that there are, but no, there's not much, you know, Florida's very flat. Mountains, very yeah. Yes, yeah, there's so. no <laughs> mountains. Um, so I, I really liked that as a little symbol map. I found it really easy to interpret straight away and really useful on top of another great map that's behind the rest of the visualization yeah no it's, it's good other, yeah and i love all these like she's got i mean she's got the, the elevation ranges i love how she's done this and mm. it's the quantified self element that i think is it's nice so she said she's, she's skied in in 12 um mountains and she's she's got those in blue the way, where she's actually been on the map Ah, so those are the ones she's been. Right, fantastic. Yeah, I think so. And then, oh, I don't know. That annoys me now. I don't want to know where somebody's been. <laughs> don't get it's jealous. Too much, too much fun and yeah, just jealousy. Don't don't make me jealous on a map. I, I want to. <laughs> and the title is just like bang on. It's great. So, yeah, well yeah, done, I'm... Michelle. All right, we need to speed up. Um, next yeah. up, we have Nathan. So Nathan is. Um, He's clearly got itchy feet. He wants to get away. Um, uh, <laughs> clearly, we can't we can't really fly anywhere at the moment. So he's he built this viz to look at places we can travel to once all this craziness is over. Um, yeah, I, I I I really loved this. I think I loved it for its simplicity and its actual its style. Again, you know, I it's it, it's it's the simple simple map base. The grey. It's probably. A, you know a, a basic style out straight out of the box from um, from tableau yeah um but the fact that it's the gray and the white and then you've got this wonderful sort of um tealy green color that's used throughout in the the heading um etc and the, the other thing i really loved about it was when you actually clicked where you can fly to it takes you through to um is it photo stock or somewhere that shows you the places shows you pictures of the places oh get okay, it Athens. So it, yeah. it actually takes you through to all the places so you can really, really get, um, you know, what you, the impression of where you're going to go and visit. Yeah, um, I did that for that, my viz on um, European cities. So you could go through and explore the city and everyone was like, oh, I just really want to travel now. Yeah, that's the other thing. I don't want to know where you've been skiing. I don't want to see all these beautiful places. I can't go anywhere. Um, I, the first thing I did when I looked at this was filter for London, as I've done now. And from London, it's just fascinating that you can pretty much fly around the yeah. world. Yeah. I mean, that's, this is, that's the other thing, sorry, about the visualisation. You know, it's, it, there's always more to things than the looks of things. The, the analysis in this particular case and looking at it from, from, from where to, you know, and the personalisation of it. I want to find my city. Where can yeah. I go from my city and where to and where can I travel to and explore in the world and you know what it's kind of nice i know the world's a bit of a, um am i allowed to say shitty place at the moment and we can't get out <laughs> yeah, and do anything but um you know this thing will end and eventually why don't you start having a look through this and start planning travels for the it's future assuming we've right? got some airlines left johnny you know the government, there the might government, be no air travel after all of this. The governments will bail those out before the end. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> like that great job. Um, yeah, I loved it. I think yeah. I just think it's really simple, clean. Brain. And the color, yeah, just just two colors again, or well, one. I mean, without if you take away the uh, the map. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Great. So next we've got Pradeep. Uh, this one got visit of the day. This was he he submitted this really early. And this is oh yes, fantastic. Yeah. So where can I expect rain? I think. Oh. I think the beauty of this one, wasn't it, was it to do with the, the animation as well? Yes, he had the GIF on the tweet. And yeah. 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 Um, oh, can you not play it in? Can we, uh... oh, you could. I don't know. Maybe you can't. But there was, a, there was a GIF in the tweet and it sort of did the sort of the, the impression of the, the, the sort of glowing drops. It had the impression of where the rain was. Um... Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can play it in here. Oh, add that on, Pradeep. It was just wonderful. <laughs> You can yeah, do a little great. flick. So um, when I did the viz with with Kevin Flerledge, we did a viz on um, sea turtles. So we had mm. we included a little um, button so you could flip between a GIF and the actual viz, and we were showing a map of uh, where the turtle had been. So you could probably yeah. play the same technique here. So just a little button to turn on the GIF. Yeah. Um, I think what he's done really well here is 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 isolating the the the, the northern United States. Um, you know, I don't know whether there was data for Alaska and Puerto Rico and Hawaii, but um, mm. stick those in there as well. But if there isn't, if it's just the contiguous United States, you know, if that's the way that what the data is, then it's just the fact that it's there. It, it, it's there's no you don't need the geography around it um, because that's where the data is. So, yeah, um, you know, I thought it, this was great. Is this map box? I think we might, I don't know actually what he's actually he poss possibly um but I think there's a lot of blur on those symbols which might be sitting over the top of the map base, yeah I think so because if you look at the coastline you've got like blurred edges haven't you yeah so maybe the blurs having an effect but either way I like the effect actually mm. yeah you know it, it's it's green <laughs> it, it's green in the east and, and and browner in the west you know and uh, <laughs> it's um yeah, I, I, I think it, it, you know, it doesn't matter in this particular, I actually like the style of it. It's almost like this sort of pastel, pastel-esque kind of feel to it. And yeah. you still know where you are, you know, you know where places are. So, um, um, yeah. especially with the, the, the tool tips there. So we've got this random place, um, is it Wyoming? Yeah, where Hannah. Just, unfortunately mm -hmm. for them, it rains a lot. Mm. Um, I, I love this as well, how he's included the little... Um, pie chart in the raindrop yeah in the raindrop yeah that's no, cool he does some good i, I really like his designs little nice great. yeah and great design elements around the edges as well yeah um but yeah i do you know what if you can get that animation in there i think it really really did help yeah it brings it to life doesn't it it did it yeah great all right next we have simon rowe and he was looking at hurricanes in um oh yeah this was sort of a great North gray, and, gray and bluey Viz with, yeah, so yeah. we've got an animation in here, so shall I give it a go? Oh, yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Is it going to work? Yeah, there we go. So it's working, so it's a bit jumpy, I think. It's the same for any viz at the moment, isn't it? Um, yeah. But what I like about this one, I gave, gave him some feedback on this, is on the colours. Just think that the colours against that background stand out so well. He's not using traditional, like, you know, red and green. Um, no, no. You've got this, like, nice orange, sorry, purple for the, the, the worst storms. It really helps him to stand out. It does. And again, you know, you can see that there's some matte box styling in there to meet the... Um, colors of the background and the rest of the visualization again the, the you know that this is going away from maps but it, it's important it, you know the, the the text color complements the the color of the land in the maps and you know it's little it is those little details that really matter um mm -hmm. i really I, another simple design thing i liked it i really liked his lines that, that purple line yeah. you know, that just little some of these little separation lines are cool um but again, I, I think seeing that, um, I think there was a GIF, wasn't there, on on, on Twitter and watching that animation, it, you know, there you was, could really yeah. see what was happening. Um, it just it reminded me of Alberto Cairo, because I know he talks about <laughs> yeah. hurricanes a lot, because he lives in Florida, doesn't he? Um, yeah. 
and it's a hot topic for him and it's, it's the first thing i thought of when i saw this yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Come on, shame. and right. i absolutely love this um radio bar chart as well yeah i, I actually Which normally I, I, I wouldn't but uh, i just think here it just works well I, I think the nice thing about the maps above is you know you've got the, the paths and then you've got the is it the landing, the landing point? points yeah so you know T two different things talking about the same thing but important things where the landing points where people are on land um so having those two elements of the, the context in there is really really useful um mm -hmm. well i found that very yeah useful. i mean because so many of these are in the sea it's the you yeah. know yeah 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 i mean i'm sure they're <laughs> affecting animals in are they affecting animals in the sea birds stuff anyway they'll probably be okay but yeah well, uh, i mean if anyone's got a boat out there <laughs> or a boat well quite yeah absolutely yeah yeah the titanic <laughs> That was, that was an iceberg. <laughs> Still be tragic. Um, anyway, yeah. Again, the color throughout uh, the 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 color matching though the icons and the colors mm -hmm. well, throughout the whole visualization. It's just sort of matching colors, isn't it? It's using the same color scheme throughout. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, love the maps. Would you mm -hmm. show um, that the rest of the world on here? um because we're focusing on the north atlantic so would you would yeah you I, I think, hide I think it, this part I, of the world i don't think i would in the sense that i think having it perhaps it could be faded out or well perhaps you could just get rid of the labels on that side you can do that in map box um mm. so that you're concentrating on yeah it's almost like you know where they where they're going to um the eastern coast of the united states mexico etc um and the gulf of mexico um that's kind of the important bits probably yeah i mean i think maybe so for some vi from, for, for a visual part of view you don't necessarily need the boundaries over on on the on, on in europe and africa yeah. you perhaps don't need the labels but i think for probably from a geographical point of view it might just give you that the scale actually these things are actually nearly up at near spain in the united kingdom yeah, yeah. that's fine but um yeah maybe get rid of some of the mm. labeling or, or uh, boundaries I mean, looking at the map again it, it, i like what the star we applied it almost looks 3d you've got some shading around like the uh the coastline yeah, yes yeah um yeah there's a little bit of um it's almost like a drop shadowy effect yeah, yeah that's cool no i like it i like it and around the lakes and the oceans inland yeah. ocean that's yeah, cool yeah all right next we have soha and soha's just some amazing maps um she just published another one today oh yeah she's just done yeah this, did she get visited? yeah this got visited the day as well yeah on iraq wasn't it yeah was, yeah i i I, <laughs> I love her maps um <laughs> I, I love the one she's done today. If you can get the chance to check that out, I think it was on yeah. conflicts. I'll, in, I'm going to bring it up because um, in Iraq. Yeah, here we go. Um, <laughs> now I'm not. I'm not. Um, it, I think there's a really useful technique here, which is done in map box which is masking out the other country so if you're particularly talking about a specific country you don't necessarily need to have um the rest of the surrounding countries ocean etc at all in there you know your main area of interest is iraq so just show iraq so there's a way of doing that in map box um i won't, I won't plug my session tomorrow which is <laughs> 8 p.m uh thursday 8 p.m map box webinar if you check me up on twitter blah blah, blah. Uh, but there's a way of doing that in map box where you can style out the rest of the surrounding areas mm. so you're focusing on the country of interest and i think it's a really useful technique it gives you space it gives you space to use around the visualization as well you'll see that a lot of things like national geographic kind of do that kind of thing um Unless, unless the neighbouring countries are integral to the story, perhaps 
you don't need to focus on that. And I think I think she's really used that very well here. I think yeah. her last visualizations and the one that she she did um, actually really really was very sad. I think the visualization that she dented in for. Um, yeah. So I, this one, uh, we go back. So this is obviously quite both quite sad. She's got conflict in Iraq and um, this one refugees in Myanmar. Yeah. Oh, so you, are you going to cover that technique tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Good. I sure am. So, yeah, so this one is looking at the, um, the survey um, and then the agenda of the refugees. She's got a lot of information in here, but again, she's, she's, she's focusing in just on this particular region and where, where the, the population in the refugee camps is. I mean, just that that sheer area where you've got all these camps, I think is, yeah, yeah. is quite sad. Yeah, I, 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 I really like her work. She's really, I can see her, you know, really pushing things and, um, you know, and, and the other thing that I think she does is... is more imp imp important stories you know <laughs> yeah. real hu human um human related stories which are very very powerful yeah um, she reminds um, me of the stuff that nye used to do so she used to focus a lot on that the middle east yeah. and yeah stories coming out like human like stories coming out of that region whether it be like war related or just people um yeah. Yeah. it's not something we see enough of i don't think no exactly and you know, I think she's doing brilliant stuff with that. Yeah. And again, she's used this, she's utilised this like negative space here for all the other information about the survey. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just really sad. I mean, look, if you just look at the data, like how, how scared are you to leave for another country? Like very afraid she stands out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you've got, you've got loads more camps at the bottom as well. No, nope, she's doing brilliant. Oh, broken it. Well, I'll move on. Um, all right, next we have Takafumi. And he's looking at Harry Potter um, and where what languages it's been translated to around the world. Oh, it's a completely yeah, different true. topic. <laughs> um, so I love like the old style of this this one. Yeah, the sort of vintage map effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, that's my cat, if you can hear it. <laughs> Right. You can go to tea, teas downstairs if you go and get tea. Um, <laughs> bless you. You're going to come here then. Come here. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, again, I, you know, I, I I love the way it, it's like a Harry Potter map, isn't it? It's 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 um, you know, it, again, it's kind of that sort of visual metaphor or that visual feeling of. Of, of the topic matter and, and using it in that way. And I think it's yeah. great. I think the red really stands out great. I actually think the lack of labeling is really good in this case, you know, um, yeah. it, you can see where the, where they are. You, I was, the, the I was amazed thing, at the, at the, the, diff, the number of different languages and the number of um, the countries that the way it's been published into Arabic. Yeah. It's Wait, not something you, I'd ever even like, really thought about. Just, you just click on out click on arabic yes yeah, so we actually like, zooms in on the the countries there uh, and then cl click on spanish <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute yeah so at first this map confused me slightly it was almost um if you if you de deselect spanish now mm -hmm. So the proportional symbol for Spanish or Arabic, well, Arabic is, is the largest on this particular view. Um, and I sat there and I thought, hold on a minute. That, what do you mean? That, the, the size of the circle? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not that country. If, does that make sense? It threw me at first. I was sat there going, but It's okay. not country, it's language, isn't it? So it's language. 
yeah, yeah. no but it's slightly just slightly threw me at first and i think having that filter as you've just done then shows the countries where the spanish speaking countries yeah. are does that make sense yeah same with arabic because it's not just one yeah. country no um, no but at first it threw me that that it was um proportionally sized on spain because it's not it's not spain it's 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 all those yeah. other spanish speaking countries yes you've got south america yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but see, all those symbols are the same size because it's one per language. So, I was wondering actually whether the, f- the initial map almost did have <laughs> these are the countries that Harry Potter has been translated in. It, uh, do you see? see yeah, I mean? no, I get, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. It's a language, and the language is across many countries. Yeah. So, I was sat there thinking, should is is it correct a proportional? Yeah, because we do French, so we got we've got countries in europe plus canada yeah i don't think they're published in africa because obviously you've got some like francophone countries there but they're not they're not shaded so which says yeah. to me they, they haven't got any harry potter translations or the data or, i don't know yeah. yeah i don't know but yeah um no i, so get, I understand not, your point yeah slightly confused me but anyway I, apart from that i think the, the styling is great i'd like say in terms of it um okay this is transparency i'm assuming on the map mm. there's probably i'm assuming there's a background image of that sort of antique looking yeah because you've got the transparency on the bars as well you can see that yeah, kind of yeah. but again that's you know the beauty of thinking you know do you want an ocean s- style no i want that um antique map effect on my ocean so i will have that as not so yeah great yeah all right I need to hurry up i've got 15 minutes <laughs> Uh, so we've got next up we've got T and she did two so this is her second one I believe this oh, one's yeah. looking at rice production around the world yeah I, it's a it's a fantastic biz I mean it's, it's I, I, a lot I, of information in here I never thought about it and it was just that was it was really refreshing to see and learn actually yeah i mean she's got all this information about you know in, in, in vietnam and the problems with the rice production there and you know it's a lot of story packed in there is and i, I think that really, this one actually was probably the one i spent the most uh, most time on and mm. i know it's, that sounds i spent silly. a lot of time I, I was just really fascinated i just it's something i'd never thought about but um it, it really taught me some things and i, I just didn't know <laughs> Uh, it, it it really it, yeah it really intrigued me and I was just like yeah I want to know yeah where the rice is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well if that if it's intrigued me and taught me something it's it's a success so there that's as far as I'm concerned yeah <clears throat> yeah I, 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 I love the circles as well that she's got the circular images Cause quite often if you do this just, you can't really get the images to fit in on the viz very well it's quite hard to pull it off. I think she's done it successfully here. Um, I love the overall style, the the, the letters. Um, you can, you know, she's got a call to action. Um, you can click through there. And how she's just focused in on this one region as well. Yeah, that sort of like fo- focus map uh, of Vietnam is just great, you know, bringing mm. it to the centre in the middle and, um, yeah, telling that story straight yeah. from the main world map's great. Yeah. Okay, and then she submitted another viz on do foodborne diseases kill? Oh yeah, so this was um Yeah, there was a lot more, a lot more charts in this one, wasn't there? Mm. Than, than down the bottom. She's got um oh, yeah, a lot of information a, in here. More map down the bottom as well yeah i guess the one the one thing i one thing that i did have to have really i mean it's just again it's packed full of info isn't it it's just, mm. just so she actually did this one i think for um i am viz food yeah because so she, i think she's from singapore and uh, the singapore tug ran an i am viz live and they focused on the food topic oh. um and this was one she produced for that i think that because it's got a map in it i think she um submitted yeah. it for both yeah so I'm pretty sure she built this relatively quickly, maybe even in like a an hour or so, no way. <laughs> um, which is yeah. amazing. 
I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I, I've always been amazed by anybody that enters Iron Viz, uh, and then anybody that stands on that stage to me are heroes and heroines. <laughs> so uh, crazy. You're all crazy, anybody who enters that thing. Um, but please keep entering it. And, and obviously, I know the team really loves everybody for doing it. So. I do too. Um, I guess the only thing on here that I was thinking about that map was, and again, I guess it was sort of the speed of it was it really, really, really simply, perhaps some of the pie charts are slightly too subtly coloured. I can't tell mm. the slices are because of the background colour of the map, but that's as much as I can really. Yeah. I mean, would we look at, I don't know if we, you'd look at this kind of information by region um, so much. I know, I've never really thought about it before, and I'm not an expert. Um, I don't know. But it's quite interesting looking at it over time and, and, and um, where, that, where they come from. I, mean, I, I don't know if you've had any types of food poison, but I've, I've had salmonella and it was absolutely awful. Um, I've got no idea where I got it from, but it, it wasn't nice at all. <laughs> Um, what's, the, uh, what's in that um, in the circle thingy circle plot? What's yes, the biggest... we've got egg. Oh, oh the biggest one, uh, multiple foods. <laughs> um, egg. Is that a kebab? Salad. So that's another one. You should be careful if you have salad that's been chopped up. Um, really? Yeah. So, so basically, don't be don't be a vegetarian, really. It's unwashed. So like if you go, so if you went to a kebab van, for instance, and and you you said I want yep. salad on my kebab, and they've cut they've pre cut up the the uh, like the cucumber and the lettuce and stuff. That's what the biggest like, one is. Goes back well, onto the biggest one. The biggest one is multiple foods. Yeah, that's kebab, isn't it? Kebab meat. <laughs> Just fry it all together. Yeah. And then and then you got salad. <laughs> top it, and top it with and salad. salad. That's it. Cucumber has got its own thing actually. Um, ah. Peppers. <laughs> Oh, wow. More kebabs, um, and randomly cantaloupe, melon. Wow! Which I'd never like again, though. But it, it, it's it's great, and I, you know, again, goes to show the talent of people what they can build in a short period of time. In I envisage, um, yeah, crazy good. Yeah, and California interestingly has the most deaths from food prepared at long-term care nursing home and assisted facilities. Just crazy. Mm. Anyway, there you go. Totally. All right. Uh, next, we have Torben looking at trees in Hamburg. So these are specifically different types of trees. Mm. So I guess this is similar to mirrors with the the trees in New York City, but going down to like almost a deeper level. It's really when, difficult, when it you loads. know, ma a mapping, mapping, mapping things with, you know, in, in this particular case, all the different species of tree. And part of you might go, I'll throw colours on there. And then you go, well, what colour are trees? And you go, well, they're sort of green, aren't they, most of them? And it, it's very, it's very difficult to get a, a decent colour palette ac across that many particular type of a category of a b or c whatever yeah. it might be. it's very very hard this so what is, is happening is it can you filter if i if you click on lime does it click? yeah so i think this is taking ages to load because if i click on lime it's it's bringing up uh, wikipedia i think that's why it was taking a while uh, i mean okay, plus so we've got so much that... data here i mean we've got we yeah. can search down to street level <laughs> um oh, so it is so it's clicking through and then it's going to bring through the and it brings through the yeah so go right in on wikipedia brilliant yeah it's just so slow because the number of data points yes yeah, so we go down oh, to a street yeah. level uh, it's amazing yeah, there's so many um <laughs> lime okay. trees or bushes that i would say i'd make it this a little bit smaller because i can't i can't scroll across while i'm on this view and obviously that's that information is being cut off At least on my screen. What? Um, th th there were some charts further down, though, weren't there? I think as well. Mm. Uh, yeah. Hang on. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, trunk circumference. <laughs> 
Uh, you see, uh, this, 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 this does it's super, fascinate It's fascinating. Me. I like nature stuff. And I actually really like trees. Um, so <laughs> actually, if the data has every... As, as trunk circumference and crown spread in there, I want to get my hands on this data and have a play with it. I'm terribly interested now. So, yeah. Torben, you've inspired me to have a look at what this is. I don't know what the best idea with the number of points is because the number of points in the map is really, really useful. You know, every street, every tree on every street. And that's incredible data that, that's been published by, I assume it's by the Hamburg local authorities of some description. Yeah. But, um, Anyway, yeah, great, intriguing. I want yeah. to play a nice, simple map as well. So we go, you know, we start off at yeah. that kind of high level, and but the map background yeah. itself is 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 perfect for this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next, we have this is a a collaboration between Vindo and Luca. Oh, this was the uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's, let, should we cover uh, diseases and nuclear bombs? <laughs> oh, man. Abandoned animals, nuke maps and uh, COVID. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. Um, so this was based off some work by, wasn't it? They were trying to, I think they were trying to recreate work by somebody else and i can't remember who it was but i think it, it was somebody was. yeah so somebody did so they, the um oh, i don't know who it was the original. they did the the nuke map and it wasn't no it was some it wasn't a tableau it's a famous viz. Oh, yeah 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 um, so, um and they it has it's this black and, and red style i'll try and dig it out um but yeah so effectively they've they've done this but they've used um i guess the buffer calculation right yeah yeah I just love the the fact that you've got you know the the background of the map throughout this viz. Um, you can select a specific nuke. <laughs> um, it's a great use of the buffer func functionality, and I think, um, yeah, it's going to that it, go, it sort of shows off the the the, the, the functionality of, of of the buffer. Um, so. Kent and Sarah and rest of the map team at Tableau. It's it's yeah, nice new feature. Yeah. Just the design of this viz is is fantastic. Um the Again, annotations the, the, and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The consistency of the colour throughout, like you say, that background. Um oh, was it, was oh here we go. There's From, the that's the oh, Alex oh. Weatherstein. Yes. The yes. original. You were right, yeah. Alex, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um again just i guess it's, it's just one of those other spatial functionalities in tableau that has been delivered in the last was it the last one or the one before i can't remember it was last uh, one it just came out 2020.1 in the last one that is just making these things easier and easier for people to analyze mm -hmm. uh, never mind um the beauty of the viz as well sorry uh in terms of the the map base really, really, it, it, it's, it's incredible actually. If you look at it, that map base is different to the background image that's above it. And it is. I just realised that because I was looking down here. Well, I'm like, that's a funny map. <laughs> but, it's so, um, but it's so well matched that it it really, really works and looks coherent. And um, yeah, again, yeah, great. Uh, yep, yeah, great. Viz. Great job. Yeah. All right. And then lastly, we have Wendy. So she's looking at China. Um, and foreign relations with 180 countries. Oh, this was another one that fascinated me. Another thing that it, I know there was a chart down at the bottom. I think. Um, I, was, I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, I was, I spent a lot of time looking at this and seeing when yeah. countries like um, suspended like foreign relations because something yeah. or other happened. Well, it was. Um, I think she'd said on Twitter. I know it's only a little map, but it's something. Yeah, she that did. Yeah. Really, really. Wendy had said, you know, it's only a little map, but it's really, you know, it was really important and a viz that she wanted to put in. And yeah, it, I, I, you know, the, the actually the the chart is unbelievably brilliant when you actually look at it. Exactly yeah. the reason that you've said, Sarah. But again, I think. I, having them both in the context is, is really fantastic. And um, seeing when the relationship was built in that way geographically is useful 
um, in a different way to the, what the chart is showing. The chart mm -hmm. shows other things. I mean, seeing the gaps in the chart below is, is something that's just, it's, it's Andy Kirk's thing. It's visualizing nothing, but the, the, but the actual nothing in that chart below is the most, almost the most important part. Yeah. That's when relationships have broken down and then restarted after a certain amount of time. What we've got away. here is we've got some countries that actually haven't got any relation at all. It's not that they had it and they lost it. They just never had it. Um, um, and right, hover over that a bit again. You can't because it's... Wait, I, think that, I think that's a C. <laughs> that's not the C. <laughs> I think it is, isn't it? It's not. Honestly, there's no C in the middle of South America. It's not that big. No. Oh, no, sorry. Not in there, no. Yeah. I mean, the, the, some some of the bits in Europe are probably. Yeah, the, the I don't know their countries. They're not. Let's not see. <laughs> well, there might not be. Um, <laughs> actually, but actually, that's a really good point, though, because if there's some bits that are as interesting, actually, in that sense, from colouring, isn't it? Or is is it a null? Is there? I think it's a null nothing? because it's null because they've never. To the 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 shading represents when the relationship was built. Um, yeah, but, so if they've never had it, that relationship, then identifying that is important, then, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's like what we're just saying, you know. I, I think one, I think some of those are actually the C. So, you, you, but you what sure? I mean, is, I'm going to have to have a look. I don't know if it's <laughs> Red Sea or the Dead Sea, but anyway, I might be wrong. Not this but... one though. There's not in South America. Oh no, sorry, no. This is a country that borders Argentina, uh, Bolivia, and Brazil. Yeah, sorry, not not that one. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I do like this, and I, I mean, I like how she's you know coloured the all the countries below in in terms of region and. Go back the... up to the map. <laughs> yeah, that's the Black Sea and the and the. Over here. Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, I guess in certain places, is it like you say that the the, the, um, the country in South America. Mm -hmm. that's whitish um looks like one of the seas so yeah i guess that's the thing if there's no data perhaps there's a way of just visually displaying yeah maybe that. it's me just been with my bad geography um, but, um, <laughs> that, um I, I don't know whether how could how you could do that maybe maybe a sea color on this might be useful uh, yeah. anyway ignore that but i think I, I this really really fascinated me again but i think it was like i said i know she said it's only a small map but i think the map complements the chart in a different way and a and an, an, and an additional way so i think it's great yeah and one thing i would change it's a minor point so we've got orange representing um suspended and restored once um on, on here and orange also represents oceana on the chart below so i'd probably right. just change the color of one of those to avoid any confusion yeah yeah um but other than that i think it's it's great right. yeah yeah, well, I thought she's got, showed China in red, and then the red in the um, yeah. the actual chart represents China as well. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, okay, that brings us to the end. Um, so thank you very much, Johnny, for all your welcome. feedback. It's been a pleasure. Um, really appreciate uh, your help on this one, and you might as well plug your webinar tomorrow <laughs> if you want once yeah, one, one more time on, <laughs> since it's on topic. <laughs> I'm doing a, a map box styling demo um, tomorrow, Thursday, 2nd of April at 8 p.m. If you follow me on Twitter, at Johnny underscore Walker, so Johnny spelt J-O-N-N-I. I've got it here uh, on a slide. The, the, oh, yes, it's on the slide. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I've been plugging it endlessly just because I'm a bad salesperson. So. <laughs> um, but there are some useful mapping tips in there with regards to masking out those countries and some other bits and bobs on styling maps and bringing them through into Tableau. So um, thank you. And thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, no, it's been great. Thank you very and, much. And just a big shout out to everybody that's entered and some incredible work. Thank you. It's, it's been such fun looking at them this month. Yeah, no, I really appreciate everyone entering, especially given the circumstances that around the world right now. Um, the fact that people have taken the time out to do this has been, it's been great. All right. Well, I'll speak to you soon, Johnny, but thank you very much once again. Thank you. All right. Take care. You take care, Sarah. Goodbye. Bye.